Let's move on to lesson two. So that's the end of lesson one. RGBAD. Okay, this should be cool. So the RGBAD is the, the four pin one. RGB LEDs are a fun and easy way to add some color to your project since they are like three regular LEDs in one. Using and connecting them is not much different. They, are, they come mostly in two versions, common anode and common cathode. Don't worry about these terms. Uh, common anode uses five volts on the common pin and common cathode connects to ground. Which one do we have? In our sketch, we'll start with the LED in the red color, red color state, then fade to green, then fade to blue, and then finally back to red color. We need four jumper wires, one LED which we have, Three 220 ohm resistors, and that's it. Okay, so at first glance, RGB uh, LEDs look like regular LEDs. However, inside the usual LED package, there are actually three LEDs, one red, one green, and one blue. By controlling the brightness of each of the individual LEDs, you can mix pretty much any color you want. Uh, we mix the colors the same way you mix paint on the palette. By adjusting the brightness of each of the three LEDs, the hard way to do this would be to use different value resistors. Or variable resistors as we did in lesson two. What we didn't we haven't done lesson two unless I assume the previous lesson to this is using different value LEDs basically. Yeah, that's so that's referring to lesson two. But that's a lot of work. Fortunately for us, Uno, our free board has an analog write function that you can use with pins marked with a squiggly line to output a variable amount of power to the appropriate LEDs. So apparently there's some squiggly line. There's the squiggly lines. So these squiggly lines can output a variable amount of power to the appropriate LEDs. Cool. So the RGB LED has four LEDs. There is one lead going to positive. Okay, so here it's telling us what we have. So we have a common cathode configuration. So top there is blue, then there's green. Cathode is the longest one. So that one needs to go either to ground or to five volts. And then bottom one's red. So common cathode connects to ground. So the longest pin there has to go to ground. Each LED inside the package requires its own 220 ohm resistor to prevent too much current flowing through it. The three positive leads of the LEDs are connected to the UNO output pins using three resistors. Cool. And it just tells us how we can mix colors together. That's fine. Pulse width modulation. You guys can have a read for this. Just pause the video, have a look. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. So we've got three pins here, three pulse width mod modulation pins. D3, D5, and D6. We're gonna attach a resistor to them, and then we're gonna attach the LEDs to the end of those resistors. These are our 220 ohm resistors. So let's get two of them. And we've already got one here as well, so we'll take that one out. That's fine. And then we'll also just get rid of all these LEDs. So you can reuse these LEDs and resistors no problem. Me personally, I don't unless I can specifically remember. So these resistor codes, they're terrible to be able to read. Like I can't even make out what colors those are. So trying to figure out their values once you've used them is a pain. But so for me, once I've used a resistor, I just throw it away and you can get 150 of the same value resistor on eBay for one pound fifty with, with shipping as well. So, so anyway, so these are our three 220 ohm resistors. So we'll use a cable over here in reference to each color. So we'll use blue for blue, red for red, and green for green, RGB. We've got our, let's go with blue for three, and then for red, six, and for five, green for five. There, now even if these guys touch, there are, there's obviously plastic insulating them, so they're not going to short each other out. I don't know why that one wouldn't go in. Anyway, it's in now. Cool, okay. So now, so I'm just going to follow this uh, schematic over here. So we've got the pins, and then all of the pins of the LED are, are connected, you know, basically in parallel to each other. We're going to go red, ground, green, blue. So let's connect our ground wire as well. There you go, so our ground is connected. I'm having trouble putting these resistors into this board. Okay, one second. All right, so I'm just gonna connect these resistors in, but Oh, 
I'll fast forward ahead for you guys because it's difficult. All right, so I've connected these now and I've left the space a row there, row 25 for the ground pin. Let me just move that down because that's, that's going to annoy me. Oh, there you go. So they're all connected together. Well, not connected together, but all in there in parallel. And then so we then put the LED. going to have to split it a bit because it's not going to go in. So I just widen all of the pins. Okay, so that's in now. Is it? Just check in. Can't really see. Yeah, there you go. So that's in. So now it's ground, which is going to go. Here. Alright, so I've connected the ground and then it's R ground G B. So you got R ground and then you got G and you got B. There we go. I hate how those resistors are like that. Usually I cut my resistors short, but I'm not going to do that for this video. Okay, so that's that. So now we've got to do some code. So after wiring, please open sketch in the folder path. So part two RGB and click upload the program. Okay, so what we got here. Okay, so inside this folder here, let me just go to tools ports okay connected that's fine that's fine all right so let's go open and then we're gonna go here english part two rgb led rgb led and then the code so now we can open this up and here you can see the pin out so here's the setup and then you got as a loop set rgb set red value to 255 the others off and then green to 255, the other's off. Then blue to 255, and the other's off. And then some other code in between. That's fine. So now let's go to upload. We're currently uploading to the Arduino. You can see the LED flashing. Meaning the, the LED on the Arduino. It says it's compiling the sketch. There you go. So it's currently green. Oh, look, it's gone to blue. That is sick. It looks amazing. <laughs> Right, let's turn this off. So that's cool, right? So that's so simple, but it's actually really, really elegant code. Like, it's nice. To think that anybody, you know, within, well, I don't know, like half an hour could then get an LED. It does it so smoothly as well. All right, so I've turned down the lights fully just so you can see the full on effect. You know, for that small LED, if you if you wanted it to be used in a dark room like this, it actually brightens up the room very nicely. Let me try it. All right, now, so now there's no light in the room other than the LED. I like it. I like it a lot. I think it's very nice. That's a cool project. I'm happy with that. All right, so let's not get complacent. Um... What I like to do is whenever I do a tutorial and they give me some code, just so I can digest the code, I like to change something. So here we've got, in our main code, we've got a setup bit here, right? So we don't want to touch any of that. But we want to find what's dealing with the the time in which the LEDs are changing between colors. And so it could be a time or function or something, but here it's just a simple for loop. You can see here four and it's count I, as a counter to 255 and then it's doing the same here and the same here so let's just change these three for loops from 255 to 100 so instead of the counter counting to 255 it's now going to count to 100 and then let's hit upload and then so now it's turned off there you go 
And look at that, now it's doing it a lot quicker. Let's try change it to let's go to fifty. So half. No, let's go even lower. We'll go twenty. Twenty and twenty. Hit upload. It's gonna turn off. There you go. Now you got a light show. That's cool, right? Okay, so let's not let rest on our laurels. Let's get cracking with uh, lesson three now, is it right? Lesson three, digital inputs. Mm 